Good afternoon, Professor Didi here. Today I am going to talk about Chapter 7, dealing with civil rights. And we talked a little bit about this before in Chapter 4 related to civil liberties. And in my opinion, what the authors of the text could have done was kind of combine both topics, but they didn't, but they didn't ask me for advice. Uh, civil rights in the Constitution. A lot of our Constitution deals with civil rights in general. And civil rights includes aspects such as voting rights, the rights of African Americans, the rights of other ethnic minorities, the rights of women, etc. Civil rights are government's guarantee of equal protection under the law. The things that are established out there that protect citizens from a variety of things to make sure they are treated justly. Sometimes that doesn't work in society. The most common civil right that everyone often talks about is voting. And voting rights are covered all throughout the Constitution. When you think about various aspects, the right of 18-year-olds to vote, the right of women to vote, the right of former slaves to vote, the right to get rid of the poll tax to expand voting rights. It's been covered in a variety of areas throughout our Constitution. When you think about all the things it has done. When we think about civil rights, the issues vary around the world. Because in some countries, it is easy to vote. Voting is encouraged. In other countries, voting is required. And rights are not equal. In some countries, you may have the right to free speech, but you can't criticize the government. So when we think about rights, at times, we take our rights for granted as far as what we can and cannot do. Always remember this. When you leave the United States... The one thing you always leave behind are your constitutional rights. You are under the rights of the country you are in. So the free speech rights you have in America are very different than free speech rights in North Korea or even Russia or Turkey. So that is something always to remember. You are under their rights and their rules and their laws and their systems of government. Civil rights are very important, and throughout the text, a lot of it talks about constitutionalism and the doctrine of that, what that entitles. I'm not going to get into a big, detailed discussion on that. I want to more focus on various aspects of rights. In 1948, the United Nations declared the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, guaranteeing rights of certain people, citizens, all throughout the globe. Of course, those rights are only as good as the country that says, you know what? we're going to recognize those rights. Because some countries, they just don't want to recognize those rights or even acknowledge that citizens have those types of rights. But civil rights are very important in society. Political culture and majority-minority relations. Minor Majority-minority. What that means in general is that in a particular area, a minority group is the majority of the population. You can think about this as parts of the Southwest where Hispanics dominate, parts of urban cities in America, such as Baltimore, Detroit, and Chicago, where African Americans may dominate, or in parts of California where Asian Americans may dominate, as far as political cultures. And in those cultures, they want things done a certain way as far as their rights and their obligations. Chapter 6 talked a lot about political culture, and I discussed some of those aspects related to rights as far as how political cultures operate in different societies, as far as how they look at things. And when we think about political culture and civil rights changes, there was a time 30 years ago where the idea of gay marriage was like, no way in hell is that going to ever happen. Then around 2005, people said, civil unions, civil unions, that'll solve the problem. But by 2015, the Supreme Court said, no, we're going even further. We're going to enunciate that gay marriage is the law of the land. And in some parts of the country, this was seen as like the worst thing in the world, Armageddon is coming. This was just expanding a civil right. Though there are some people on the Supreme Court today that would probably like to see that right taken away. There's been a lot of issues related to discrimination against the LGBTQ community. It has happened for a variety of reasons. And it's not just in the United States. It's in various countries and continents, such as the continent of Africa, parts of Asia, very strongly anti-rights for gays and other various groups. In other countries, rights have been much more expanded as far as for same-sex couples, as far as various things. But you will always have people, and often going back to religious and biblical things, that say, 
I don't want to accept that at all. Let me tell you a little secret. Priest, not allowed to marry. A lot of priests are gay. I have a friend of mine who's a priest, and we were talking about this years ago, and he said, yes, a lot of my friends who are priests, they're gay. People just don't want to think about it, realize it, or accept it in a variety of ways. One other thing we've seen at times over the last several years in areas of civil rights abuses is voter suppression. Voter suppression, people may say, well, it's ID laws. But at times it's very hard for people to get an ID. You know, there are some people who don't drive. There are some people that may not be able to get voter identification. There are some states that say, well, if you have an identification showing that you own a gun that's, that's registered, that's good enough. But we're not going to accept other forms of ID. So sometimes suppression is done through making it difficult to vote. Now, how would you say voting difficult to vote? Reducing voting hours as a way of voter suppression. Also making it more difficult to register the vote. That's a form of voter suppression, though we don't think of it that way. In some countries, they actually, the government goes out and registers you the vote to make sure you are registered. During the Jim Crow era, voter suppression was very common among African Americans. And an idea of voter suppression was very simply, if you attempt to vote, you may vote, but you may lose your job the next day. Do you really want to lose your job over the opportunity to vote in an election where your vote may not decide things? So voter suppression has been used constantly by a variety of groups. And a lot of voter suppression now is talked about, let's reduce voting. Let's just have it on election day. Let's not count mail-in ballots. Let's make it more difficult to vote. We should make it as easy to vote as possible so more people participate in the democratic process. And those who don't choose to vote, well, they've had their opportunity to vote and they've had their chances to vote. But voting is a very important aspect in American society. We've often seen at times discrimination when it comes to rights along ethnic and religious discrimination. This can be discrimination regarding ethnic groups and their participation in society, whether it's a group that doesn't have a lot of strength in a different part of the country, or a religious group that people believe we have a right to practice our religious beliefs, but in certain parts of the country, those beliefs may not be acceptable. You know, in the northeastern part of the United States, at places like Maryland and other places, there's Catholic churches all over the place. You go into the Bible Belt, there's not a lot of Catholic churches. And you go into certain parts of this country, there are a lot of Protestant churches. In other parts, not as many. In some parts of this country, a lot of synagogues. In other parts of this country, not many at all. Historically, unfortunately, the worst group that's been discriminated against probably in our history is Native Americans. It was their land. They were here first. We moved them off the land the government said to do this. We tried to Americanize Native Americans, doing what we could to take away their culture and doing a variety of things to make their life more difficult. They were here first and we did whatever we could to take the land that we thought was better for them and move them in the reservations and a variety of other things. I would suggest if you ever get the chance to visit a Native American reservation. One of the things I learned years ago going to New Mexico is that Native Americans, they call themselves Indians. They talk about it as Indian culture, which kind of surprised me. And they're very proud of their culture. And I even have a few Native American artifacts, such as kachia dolls and other various pottery, because I find the culture so fascinating. But in our history, we did what we could to try to basically suppress their culture, to Americanize them, as I said, even though they were here first. In the 1940s, we put Japanese Americans in concentration camps. After Pearl Harbor was bombed, they were seen as a threat. We did not put the same numbers of German Americans or Italian Americans in concentration camps, but we did this for Japanese Americans. Uh, many ways they lost their possessions, they were given very little notice to leave, and basically were entirely uprooted to other parts of the country. This was done under an executive order by President Franklin Roosevelt. This was not right. This was a civil rights abuse. In the 1980s, the government made up for it by basically deciding we will give everyone $10,000 for this terrible thing. I had a music teacher in college who was in one of these concentration camps. And what he told me was he doesn't remember much of it because the parents focused it on making it a happy time and making their childhood happy and not focusing on what they were going through. 
Many of the people who were in the camps volunteered to actually serve in the American military and serve with distinction. Ironically, the U.S. military being what it was, sent them to Europe, not to the Far East to fight because they were worried that they would you know, turn themselves over to the Japanese and fight for the Japanese. Of course, one of the things we know a lot about civil rights abuses deals with the issue of slavery, where African Americans were kidnapped. A diaspora occurred in Africa where these men and women were taken, often paid by the British and other parties to round up slaves and bring them here for labor. One of the places that the highest concentrated slavery occurred was in Brazil. And as we know, it's one of those stains on American society that people don't want to talk about. Those should realize. We did a, slavery was discussed in the Constitution with the Three-Fifths Compromise, though the word slavery was not even used. Finally, the 13th Amendment was passed, basically deciding, yes, we're going to free the slaves. We kind of made a mistake here. If you think about it, besides federalism, the Civil War was fought over slavery. In our country's civil rights history, there have been many civil rights movements. Of course, one of the most well-known civil rights movement is the civil rights movement for African Americans in the 50s and 60s, led by men like Martin Luther King, led by men like Thurgood Marshall, who fought the civil rights movement in the courtroom. Part of the civil rights movement included doing a variety of things such as marches and protests and boycotts in the 50s and 60s. Civil rights can have an important aspect Protests get attention. They get attention from the media. During the apartheid movement in South Africa in the 1980s, there were hundreds of protests that gathered attention. A lot of the civil rights movement protests in America started with Plessy versus Ferguson in 1896, a court case that basically said separate but equal was acceptable as long as the facilities were equal. And the NAACP started the movement of basically saying, we're going to declare war against Plessy by getting rid of this. And by 1954, with the Brown case, separate but equal was considered no longer acceptable. And in time, with rights, African Americans were better integrated in society. The problem is, you can't get rid of prejudice when it's learned at home in a variety of other places. President Lyndon Johnson was a strong proponent of the Civil Rights Movement. He felt was necessary to incorporate African Americans in society. In the last few years, we've seen the Black Lives Matter movement get more attention. President Biden has given this a lot of focus as far as promoting more civil rights for African Americans. Of course, by naming the first African American, you know, vice president Kamala Harris. These type of movements are very important. They get a lot of attention as far as how they're treated. They also scare a lot of people. If you want to think about another civil rights movement, the Me Too movement, a movement that started in the 1990s, was killed by Bill Clinton because women in Congress decided to support Clinton over Monica Lewinsky, and then came back into play in around 2017 with a variety of accusations against powerful men, including Harvey Weinstein. The Me Too movement is an important movement, recognizing various discrimination against women in practices that are considered unacceptable. Men like Bill Cosby, Matt Lauer, etc., lost their, their fame in society and in many ways were held the consequences because of what they did. And what they did, obviously, with sexual harassment, uh, etc., was completely wrong. Government plays a huge role in the civil rights movement with enacting of various laws and ideas in order to get rid of discrimination, to fully embrace everyone in the society. And these are important factors. Various laws were passed in the 1960s expanding voting rights in America. Actions were passed such as the Voting Rights Act in order to allow more African Americans the rights and opportunities to vote without discrimination. These type of things are very important in society. Sometimes government has to step in. Business can sometimes step in in little ways by basically saying we welcome people of different groups as part of our company and our culture. Corporate America can play a huge role in the civil rights movement with hiring practices, with recognizing various events for ethnic minority groups in the LBGTQ community. When corporate America gets involved and recognizes these things, it expands civil rights. And remember this. Those groups, they're also something else, customers. 
You don't want to discriminate against customers. So these things are very important to do. You need to treat people with respect. Civil rights are an important aspect in American society. Next time, I'm going to talk about other aspects in America, such as interest groups, political parties, and elections. Most importantly of all, take care. Have a great day.